Hello everyone, today I'll be doing a solo Grandmaster, the Rehash Moon Battleground with Hunter. For my subclass, I'll be using Night Stalker. Here are the mods and fragments I'll be using this video. For my Kinetic, I'll be using Wish Ender, but the pink version. Next, I'll be using Arc Glaive. For my Heavy, I'll be using the Sleepless Rocket. Here are the armor mods I'll be using in this video. This is going to be the commentary run, a mini invisible devour intellect build. This week I decide to go for the hunter and for the platinum rank. I'll be using Wish Ender and Six Coyote. The reason why I'm not using the Graviton Forfeit is I don't have the tier 10 strength and the tier 10 resilience and a bit of mobility. So I couldn't have the 10 tier strength and my build wasn't working out. So this is a plan B if you don't have the right stats for the Graviton Forfeit. And the chain reaction actually works pretty well. And because I didn't have a really good roll on the hothead to deal with the champions and to deal with the boss fight. Because of that, I had to try out different types of arc rockets, void rockets, and see which one works, which one doesn't. And it was a struggle, and I'm not really happy about it. This season, I'm not really happy about it. I'm really, I'm pretty upset, as you guys can tell by my voice. First things first, you must take down the champion as fast as you can. The reason why is you don't want this champion to pull back. And then just hang around with the other bigger champion that will spawn too, depending how many adds you take down. So if you do have you if you do have your super, use it right away. Because the problem is you want to take down this champion and you want as much champions to spawn to get this activity done. What you need to do for platinum rank, maybe this is a bug, I'm not hundred percent sure. You know, I don't think this was play tested to be honest. You have to not push towards this statue here or basically don't go down the stairs because if you make the Lucent Hive to spawn, the one that is called the Sentinel Lucent Hive mini boss, then you won't be able to get the Platinum Rank. I'm not sure if it's a bug. I don't, I'm not really sure if it is a bug, but you want to lure these champions and try your best to take them down from far distance from the right side and if they are walking on the path on the right side then take them down as much as you can so depending how fast you can take them down it can take rough about eight minutes maybe less or it'll take you eight to fifteen minutes depending of your loadout I decided to take my time here. Maybe if I was using a hand cannon, I could stagger the champions much more faster. Or maybe if I was using a linear fusion rifle, I could take down the champions much faster. I have used a linear fusion rifle, but my problem was just dealing with the boss fight and the ad clear. And I just didn't have enough patience. And I just decided to go for a rocket instead of a linear fusion. Everyone's playstyle is different. If you do want to go for a linear fusion using Taipan or a arc linear fusion rifle, then go ahead, you can use that. But you want to make sure you lure these champions. And the objective does say the crash, they loosen high forces. So that includes the champions. So make sure you clear as much ads as you can and take down as much champions so the ads can respawn over and over and for some reason this strat will work and you'll be able to get platinum rank also i would like to mention is always use your super as much as you can so you can deal with the champions and the arc knights and the thralls from far distance 
I was thinking of using a different super. Maybe that could have worked as well. But it's just the boss fight I was thinking about. And I didn't think... I didn't think it was going to work 100%. So yeah, this is basically what we're going to be doing for the past 5 minutes of now. And let me just say, this is extremely frustrating and I don't like Battlegrounds. I hate it. I hate it. Why did they put Battlegrounds? What were they thinking? This is basically a rehash Battlegrounds. And you're probably wondering, oh Blitz, what does that mean? Well, actually, it means they're putting all ideas or materials into a new form without any significant change or improvement. The only thing I see for this Battlegrounds is they add more champions, and then they nerf the mini safe spot at the boss fight. That's about it. I don't think this was playtested. And you're probably wondering, why don't you just do DPS above the stairs? Well, here's the problem. You need to clear as much as you can so the ship can despawn. And this ship over here can track you and they can two-shot you. Or three-shot you if you're lucky. So there's really no other way to deal with this situation where this ship keeps spamming this arc blast at you. And you have to clear all these ads so the ship can despawn and then you can have these champions to spawn and push or they'll be back in the way hanging around all the way for the back with the barrier champion that should spawn very soon or you can bait the barrier champion to go from the right side so you can do dps so i am using the glaive to stagger the unstoppable champion and then use my super that's one of the reasons why i use this type of super over the other one because I can do at least somewhat DPS dealing with this unstoppable champion with his rehash battlegrounds. So not everyone knows what's rehash battlegrounds. Now I'm going to pretty much say it throughout this whole entire video. And I just despise it. I'm spending five minutes of my life doing this. I don't really think this is really enjoyable. And the reason why I say this is because I don't think this was play tested. I feel like this was just copy and paste to a GM playlist. And I do agree. I do believe that all Battlegrounds, even Mars, and probably Europe next season is going to be coming up. Because I don't think they're going to change it. I don't think Battlegrounds belongs on Grandmaster playlist. I don't like it. I hate it. This is horrible. I can't believe there are players that actually like this. They actually think this is a good idea. This is a horrible idea. And now we're going to have this bear champion harassing me because I'm trying to make a rant here, but I can't. So once you do have this bear champion to push by and then start shooting this arc at you, arc blast at you, or Kai blast at you, Dragon Ball Z reference, then you can just simply use Wish Ender and then use your rocket if you can. I do recommend if you do have the Chain Reaction rocket, use your rockets to clear the ads more than doing DPS on the champions and then switch to your Wish Ender so you can have a higher chance of having heavy bricks. But it seems to work, so I'm just gonna go, f go for the flow. I am just taking my sweet time clearing all these acolytes. Can't really push, can't really pass that statue from the left side you see there or go down the stairs because I don't want the loosened hive to spawn and it's gonna mess up my platinum rank unless they fix this bug. Isn't this great? I'm the happiest guardian ever. This is the most challenging GM ever. I love it, sarcastically. I am using Final Wisdom so I can get a little bit more boost up of the intellect I have for my hunter. It seems to be working pretty great. That is why I am having my super pretty fast compared to the other previous videos. And of course, yes, someone has mentioned me about which ender you can get your super fast. I know about that, alright. 
I know about that. I just forgot to mention my commentaries, but yes, if you're using Wish Ender, you can get your super pretty, pretty fast. You can see over here from the left bottom where I'm getting my super pretty quickly. So that's one benefit of using Wish Ender, and I do recommend using Wish Ender. And if you do have a Graviton Forfeit with the 10 tier strength of the resilience and a bit hint of mobility, then I recommend going for that build in 6 Coyote. 6 Coyote is a plan B loadout or a plan B build if you don't have the Graviton Forfeit of the right stats for your Hunter. And that's basically why I'm using 6 Coyote because I didn't have tier 10 strength and it wasn't going to work out. So I said, all right. And my mobility was... My mobility was 10, by the way, and you already know that's not good. So I had to switch to 6 Coyote and then boost up a little bit of my strength for the smoke bomb. So now I'm just trying to bait these thralls to push because I can't go past that statue over here. It's already trolling me. It's like, ask me right now, do you feel the suffering? Blitz. Actually, no, this rehash battlegrounds, I don't feel anything. I feel so much anger. I don't want a battlegrounds. I want a new strike, all right? I want these sunset strikes, all the old strikes from Destiny 1. Why are we having these battlegrounds into a GM playlist? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't like it. I hate it. Once again, I'm going to say this. I don't understand why players like it. I don't think it's fun and challenging. I mean, don't you want something fun and enjoyable? You know, like a garden world. Will of a Thousands. Did you know there was no champions at Will of a Thousands? They never even made it into champions or anything. So imagine if they brought back Will of a Thousands. Or imagine... Sabbath and Song. I thought this season we were going to have Titan back in Sabbath and Song as a nightfall for this season. But no, they decided to put Moon Battleground. Woo, it's challenging, guys. No, I would rather play Sabbath Song with a reworked version than this. So make sure you do push the champion and it's going to harass you with his Archai. Once we do that, we still have to take down more ads. So I can't pass that troll statue that's giving me this... This emote that is saying suffer blitz or suffer fire team. Because this is absolutely ridiculous. I hate this. And I am fed up. I did say my Mars video, I don't like battlegrounds. And I despise it even more. I don't like it. I don't support this at all. I really hope... They get rid of this battlegrounds and honestly i don't think they're gonna do it i mean i already have a prediction they're gonna have battlegrounds again next season but in europe probably well maybe another moon battleground do i hear dreaming city and it's just gonna go on and on and then let's not forget ness's battlegrounds they're gonna probably bring that one I really hope people will agree with me and I hope my mini rant that Battlegrounds just doesn't belong on GM playlists. It's not fun anymore. I don't enjoy GMs anymore this season and last season. And yes, there is another bear champion up ahead. So you can actually bait these bear champions. And once you do, just try your best to do DPS. Use your wish under. And if you have to use a rocket, then use the rocket. I'm just using the rocket to clear the ads so I can make this a bit more easier-ish for my hunter. I mean, yes, I could have used a linear fusion rifle, but the thing is that you have to keep spamming wish ender over and over and over again. You're going to get sick and tired, especially just spamming wish ender for eight minutes of your life at the boss and another eight minutes and another five minutes. If you do have your super, make sure you use your super to do DPS and excuse my poor, poor super. You know, sometimes the hunter super 
doesn't track the enemies from far distance. I mean, it did long time ago. What a bummer is that? What a bummer, right? So now we have to deal with these arc knights, and I don't have any more rockets. So the best thing I had to do, and also for the fire team, is just spam Wish Ender or Lemon Arc if you're in the fire team. Maybe one person can have Lemon Arc. Another person can, two people can have Wish Ender. Maybe that load that will work out great too. Maybe Leviathan's Breath will work too for a fire team, but I'll be honest, I have not tried the fire team yet. Because all since Tuesday, all I've been doing was just testing out the solo run. Because I had a really good idea for the other moon battleground just to get it done and over it. Then I found out it was this moon version and I wasted three hours of my life doing test runs and then I didn't do any test runs for this at all so I had to do testing while trying to get the run done and yes this guy doesn't like me see now do you see what I mean Hello. Hello. Hey. oh my god listen. Navi the fairy hey listen look look listen to me well you know what I already know what you're trying to do. You're trying to one-shot me and it ain't gonna work. So once we complete the objective, then you can go push forward, have the loosen hide to spawn, and then despawn being a scaredy cat. Once you clear the ads, then you can move forward, have the cabal to spawn, have the loosen hide spawn, don't touch it, and then it will despawn and you should be able to get the platinum rank. Now here's the best part. So you see these champions here. So I was debating of skipping them. And you're probably thinking, why Blitz? Why would you skip them? Don't you want platinum rank? Well, if you look at the bottom right, it says zero points. Zero X. So that means that these champions are not going to give you any points. And then you know what's the best part? You want to know the really best part about this? It doesn't give you any revives. What? What do you mean, Blitz? Yeah. So not only you have to kill these champions, I was thinking of skipping them, by the way, but I haven't finished the testing. Unless one of you fire teams will like to sacrifice and do the testing where you do this method, but you skip the two bigger champions to see if you get platinum and let me know if it works or not. But yeah, you kill these champions. And you don't get any revives. And you get no points! Isn't that great? Isn't that challenging and fun? So would you rather play this or Sabbath's song? Please tell me right now. A Will of a Thousands from Mars. Or a Garden World. Or Trees of Probabilities. Doesn't those strikes sound more interesting than this one? Yes? No? Maybe? I, I, I Actually, Blitz, no. Th it's more challenging. No. No, what about Festering Core? Remember Festering Core when they made it into a GM for just one season and then they sunset it? Strikes had a story. This has... This doesn't really have a story. And now we're gonna go to the best part ever. Disrupt the portal ritual. So let's talk about solo and fire team. So first objective is you must collect these moats. I'm gonna call them moats. Basically like gambit. And then dunk them. So once we dunk one, I'm gonna pull back. Because we're actually gonna have four champions. But when you dunk the first one, the moats, right? 
There's gonna be the barrier champion. And then there's gonna be unstoppable champion. So now you're probably thinking, why you don't just go and deal with the champions on the door? Well, I'll tell you why. Because of console aim assist on consoles. Now, the problem is that unstoppable champion, the barrier champions, you have to take them down quickly and they're gonna jump from the left. Hop to the left, hop to the right. And if you're playing on Xbox and one PlayStation 5, you're gonna have this auto aim assist thing messing up your DPS and you have to take them down quickly and now. You're, so you're gonna do all your rockets, all your linear, and then if you mess up, then you start all over again. And then you're gonna have the shrieker shooting at you and then the left one and the right one. So it's not gonna work out. So the only thing I can think of is just going to back here. The good news for this mini phase is that the Lucent Hives, the Hunter Lucent Hives, don't spawn on this phase. So do make sure you take down these bigger champions, well, one of them, and then one of the unstoppable champions. Now, be aware when doing this DP, especially on solo, you must take down the barrier champion. You might have to move around a bit. If you do have your super, I highly recommend you just use your super right away. If you do have it, offer your fire team. Because this barrier champion likes to troll you. And when I say troll you, I mean it likes to go behind that wall behind there or to that bush that you're going to despise. And then you'd start all over your DPS. So once we clear all the champions, then I do recommend you just take down the Shrieker or the Wizard, my bad. Sorry, it's just that there's going to be two Shriekers that will spawn in this mini area. So I apologize for that. And now we're going to be farming the moats. Now the one thing you may ask is, can't you just stay in this little area and then not grab it? Well, it's basically like Gambit. See, the problem for this is that you need to collect them quickly or they're going to disappear. I know, it's it's horrible, it's... So are you sure this was playtested? Can anyone tell me, was this playtested? Because I don't think it was. So the only thing you can do is collect only three. But if you are in a fire team... I don't know if this is true or not. I have not tested on fire team, but I think each character can carry three. Or count as in all characters. But if it is true that each character, each of the guardians can carry three, then it'll probably be much easier than solo version. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to dunk three of them. And then once I do that, I'm going to slide for my life and run away because now we're gonna have loose and hive hunters by the way blade barrage hunters they're gonna spawn and then we're gonna have this shrieker that will spawn highly recommend you use your rocket or your linear to do dps at the shrieker so make sure you take down the shrieker and then you have to collect the orbs or the motes sorry it's just that in Mars, we had to carry these orbs and then they have like a less than 20 second timer. Once we deal with the Shrieker, now we have to deal with this sh wizard. So I always just use a rocket and then two shots of wish ender it seems to be working great i did try using linear but with the auto aiming and all that goody stuff he just kept going back and forth dancing left and right and hiding and it was just extremely annoying and i just lost my patience i did not understand why it was doing that i mean i have seen gameplay and they didn't really do so much on PC, but on console, they were just acting so bizarre. Just wait till I explain about the boss fight too. 
because I actually was trying to do the wish ender jump method and it didn't work on console. You have to shoot and peek, shoot and peek, just like in trials ish. So now I'm going to be getting the next moat. If you do have Graviton Forfeit, then what you can do over here is just use a innocent dodge and then pull back. For me, I couldn't really do that so much. I had to use double of my dodge. I could use my smoke to get a little bit more seconds of invisibility. But I just don't think it's worth it too much because sometimes the ads are not there. And then I have to wait for my smoke. So I'm going to be waiting for the next wizard to spawn. So I'm going to use my rocket, a little bit of wish ender. And he was just being a troll right now. He's just trying to take me down on his overpowered Kai blast. And now we're going to go and move forward. Now this one is going to be a bit tricky because now I have to deal with the psychopathic hunter loosen hives. You only can do three at a time. So I do recommend to dunk the moats on the front side and then any of the left and right. The reason why I wouldn't really leave the middle one because I noticed the loosen hive will stay in the middle. And they will use their super when you are standing in this area right here. So you want to make sure and move the loosen hives on the left or the right side so they won't interrupt you when you are trying to get the boats from the wizard. So for this method, you must turn invisible, dunk the moats, pull back. This solar's mini super will track you even if you are invisible. So I am waiting for it to calm down. Calm down. I just want to get this done. So I'm just waiting patiently until he realized there is no ghosts. And then he's going to go back to normal. And then I can run away and slide for my life. So for this mini phase over here is I'm going to be dunking three more but I need to collect them so now I have to deal with the wizard once again and right now I'm just waiting for my dodge because I need two dodges to make this work unless I had the graviton forfeit you know this would have been easier and much more faster to run but because I didn't have the right stats for my build it didn't work out so I had to go for plan b so I'm going to use Wish Ender, use a rocket, and then make sure I turn invisible and then slide for my life. And then this Acolyte is trolling me, I swear. This is... I'm not doing this on purpose. Alright. All these Acolytes have a mind of their own and they don't like me. So now I'm going to be using another rocket. I'm going to wait patiently once again. The waiting game. Isn't this fun? I mean, would you rather play Sabbathan Song over this? Yes? No? Maybe? I mean, I would definitely rather play Sabbathan Song on Titan than this. The rehash battlegrounds. So this wizard was being complicated. My rock and miss. Which it can happen. Nobody's perfect. So I'm going to be turning invisible once again. I'm going to grab the moat before they disappear. So I'm going to pull back. And then this is going to be the phase. If I remember precisely. Once you dunk the three orbs. You're going to have another shrieker that will spawn. And champions. So remember, overall, there's going to be four champions in this room, two unstoppables, two barriers, and then you're going to have the three loosened hive hunters, or I'm just going to call them loosened hives. 
So now I'm going to be collecting this mode right here. And then I'm going to pull back and wait for my dodge. So I'm going to do a mini time skip because I don't want to waste people's time. I'm going to touch grass. Once I have my dodge, I'm going to go from the right side. So now I'm going to be dunking the motes or the orbs. I got to make sure the loosened hive doesn't one shot me. So now I'm going to pull back because he is freaking out. So the best thing I think works is go behind his wall. Just wait, be patient. And then you can run away because the thing is, even if you run away while invisible, it super can track you and it's extremely weird. I don't know why, but hey, that's the game, you know. Funny things always happen. And now I'm going to be dealing with the last two champions in this area. Thank the Traveler and the Speaker. You want to bait the unstoppable and obey your champions. I do recommend to use your super when you are dealing with the champions. So I'm trying to make this bigger champion to cooperate with me. Because he's not... He's in a really awkward spot. And he used his barricade. I mean his bubble barrier shield. And I forgot to mention this, there will also be a spawn of a mini boss ogre. So not only you have to deal with this little champion and the bigger champion, you also have to deal with this mini ogre that's not a champion. Great. What else can go wrong in this nightfall? It is challenging. It's challenging, Blitz. It's challenging. Yeah, it's really challenging. So I'm going to be dealing with this Unstoppable Champion because it decided to go a little bit too aggressive. It was way too close because I wanted to use my super on the Barrier Champion. But because this Unstoppable Champion was not cooperating with me and it wanted to one-shot me, which I don't want that to happen, then I had no choice but to use my super because... I didn't want it to send me back to orbit, alright? I mean, look how much t 32 minutes! Or in 30 minutes! And we're not even at the boss fight. It just gets better and better. Stop doing ballerina twirls! No one wants to see your ballerina twirl skills, alright? We just want to take you down and then just get platinum rank barrier champion. I am fed up of this barrier champion doing ballerina twirls again! I hate it! Stop doing that! I just want to get this done. Using a linear fusion rifle will work great, but at the same time, I was just using rockets just to deal with the boss fight. Is he going to do ballerina twirls again? I think he did four times already. This is a nightmare. I am so frustrated. This is ridiculous. Another ballerina twirl? Are you kidding me? This guy is worse than the light blade at the boss fight. I mean, I know I complain about the ballerina twirls at the bear champions, the boss fight, a light blade, but this is ridiculous. Are you done, ballerina twirls? And this is why on console doing the jump wish ender method is not a good idea. You saw there for proof that. Doing that method doesn't work. It doesn't work out on PS5. It doesn't work out on Xbox. Not efficiently. Not accurately. And then this Hunter Lucent Hive almost sent me back to orbit. Great. So now I'm going to be going back to the door. To the entrance. So I can deal with the Shrieker because I sense there was a Shrieker that spawned and I need to deal with him. I need to use a rocket, I need to do DPS. And yes, I did pull back and the reason why was because the heavy bricks. I need to get more heavy for my rocket so I can deal with the remaining wizards. So here's one thing that people make mistakes that I should mention. So when going for the solo, you only can pick up one emote, Do not pick up three. When you are 10 out of 12, only pick one. 
and then dunk the mode. The reason why is even if you have times three, it's still going to be 11 out of 12. It's not going to be two. So unless you're in a fire team where your teammate has one mode and you have one mode, then one of you can go right, one of you can go left. But for this one, you can't do that. So now we have to do the most frustrating way where we have to deal with a shrieker. And we only can dunk the moats one at a time. Instead of just having three. And then you can dunk one and you can go to the left or the right. And then done and then next area. Nope, we can't do that for this one unless we're in the fire team maybe. Not entirely sure because I've never done the fire team version yet. So now I'm just dealing with the Shrieker. Isn't it fun? This is the best day ever. Happiest guardian in my life. I'm having the best experience ever. This is really challenging. This is fun. Enjoyable. Rehash Grandmaster. Rehash Battlegrounds. So now we're going to be dealing with this wizard. I don't know why, but every time I kill this wizard, it pops this poison smoke. It is extremely annoying, especially if you are not on Hunter, if you're going on a Warlock or Titan. You have to wait for the smoke to disappear to grab the moats. I'm going to do a mini time skip here. I'm going to wait for my dodge so I can dunk the moat. I'm going to go... Pop a smoke, and then I'm gonna go for another right side. Just be aware of the loosened hive that can freak out and get scared when you dunk the moats for some reason. Be aware that sometimes you'll be having two of the loosened hives, sometimes one. So always use your wish ender to see which one seems the safest for now so you can dunk the orb. And then wait and hide behind the wall for your life. And then once he stops freaking out the loosen hive, then you slide for your life and then go back to the entrance. So now we're gonna be dealing with one more moat. One more moat and then we're just done with this horrendous rehash battlegrounds for now. So I'm gonna be getting the moat once again. Just double checking, by the way. And then I'm going to be grabbing the moat and then pulling back and then waiting for my dodge. So I'm going to do another mini time skip because now I have to wait for my dodge so I can make sure I don't mess up. Because the thing that, here's the thing guys. The problem is that once you dunk the last orb or the moat, it will take a couple of seconds for the ads and the loosened hive to despawn. I'm going to do a mini time skip right now. Once I get my smoke and my dodges, I'm going to go turn invisible. We're going to dunk the last orb and then we got loosen hive on the right. So make sure you dodge and then you hide, use your glaive. And I was actually lucky here where the loosen hive didn't react and turn super. So that was lucky. And now I'm going to wait until these acolytes they spawn. Please go away. I'm going to do a mini time skip here. I was looking for heavy. Alright, so now we're going to go to the next area. And this is the area where we're going to deal with two unstoppable champions. And have the poor innocent cabal. They... Well, they got sent back to orbit, I guess. I cannot say... Oh, okay, they they got killed. They got killed, alright. And now I'm gonna try to save the last general one. Don't worry, I'll save you. I'm trying, but Hunter... I was trying to save this mini boss. Well, I was trying to save the Cabal, the ally, but it didn't work out. Well, sacrifices will be made. So I do recommend just using your glaive 
or you can use your hand cannon to deal with these champions to stagger them. And then now the best part is we're going to deal with the boss. But the good news is by the power of editing, I'm going to time skip of the DPS of me just standing in one place for five minutes of my life dealing with the boss. I decided to save my rockets. The reason why I'm not using my rockets is for the boss fire. I want to clear the ads and then deal with the final boss a little bit more easier. Everyone's different. So once I deal with this unstoppable champion, yes, I could have used a rocket, but I'm not going to. Now we're going to have to make the boss to spawn and then turn invisible and run away of our lives because we're going to have a shrieker, which I'll talk about that very soon. So please, unstoppable champion, we just want to get this done. So we're gonna go move forward and now the best part is we're gonna make this boss spawn. So once he spawns or she spawns, we're gonna pull back, turn invisible because there's gonna be a shrieker that is going to harass you. And it is an infinite shrieker, by the way. So this shrieker it's infinite. So even if you kill the Shrieker, it will spawn over and over and over again. Now someone may say that that's a good thing because they can farm points and they can farm heavy bricks. For me, it just seems unfair and it doesn't make sense. I don't get it. Now do you see why I prefer Sapphire Song or the Old Strikes over Battlegrounds? I don't think this was playtested at all. So now we're going to be dealing with the boss. I'm going to go on top of this little mini platform and I'm just going to spam Wish Ender. And you're probably wondering what's going on there. Well, sometimes when you're doing DPS at the boss, the Shrieker will spawn. The Shrieker will notice it and then start shooting Void at you. So I'm going to do a mini time skip here until the Shrieker starts to try to mess up my DPS. When I'm just standing here. Yeah, this is really challenging. Isn't this fun? This is so fun. After spending five minutes of my life doing this really boring DPS. The Shrieker noticed me. I pulled back. And then now I have to use a rocket to do DPS or Wish Ender. But you know what's the best part? Even if you kill it, it respawns again. Isn't that fun? Isn't that challenging? Isn't that fairness there? Now, back to the DPS at the boss. Don't worry about the boss. It loves to hover left and right. And then pop his healing drift a bit. It's just going on the left and the right, doing the cha-cha dance, right and left, right and left. Now, hopefully we'll do enough DPS so we can just go to the boss fight. And you know what's the best part? All that damage you did spend five minutes or eight minutes of your life doesn't really matter because now her health's going to be all full. And then you have to do DPS again. We're going to start the boss fight and it's going to be a struggle. So first things first is that I just use my super to deal with the Arcanites. They do spawn infinitely. They have a little timer. It's really awkward. And the one thing I despise is the Acolytes. They should fire at you. For the fire team, it wouldn't really be so bad at this phase because the boss will be distracted on 
your fire team and it wouldn't really be that bad. See, the problem over here is since the boss can see me, I have to peek and shoot for this boss to not spam his arc grenades. But then there are times where it decides to just throw arc grenades at me. And it also likes to shoot arc at me at the same time. So do make sure you peek and shoot. I did try the jump method on this phase, the second phase, the third phase. It didn't work out. It didn't work, alright? It doesn't work. Maybe it works on PC. I guess it does work on PC, but it doesn't work on PS5. It doesn't really work so well on console overall. So this is the DPS, guys. So I'm not going to time skip here. If I'm going to suffer, you're going to suffer with me. I will time skip at the second phase because I found a really nice safe spot. Which I was actually really surprised. I didn't think it was going to work, but it did. So I will time skip the DPS there. The only problem with the DPS is it's going to take time and the boss likes to hide and then float around again and over and over again. So during this phase, you can manipulate the boss, but you have to be aware that the boss loves to surprise attack you. And it's really hard to tell when it's trying to throw arc pulse grenades at you. So just be on a lookout and be on a lookout that he likes to shoot arc at you at the same time. So because the arc knights were not shooting arc at me, I decided to stay on this spot. And it's not safe 100%. Sometimes the boss likes to throw an arc grenade like it did on the left side. It did throw an arc grenade. And then if it is a little too close to me, I try to make it move from the left side. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But I was having a hard time dealing with this boss and then these acolytes kept trying to throw fire at me. It was already messed up. It's awkward. It's just bizarre. I don't really like this boss fight and I just don't like battlegrounds overall. I don't like rehash battlegrounds on a GM. And as I said before, they don't belong on Grandmasters. They don't belong here. I prefer new strikes, sunset strikes, or the Destiny 1 strikes for the Grandmaster playlist. So right now, I'm just trying to deal with the Acolytes, and it's gonna be slow. And this boss doesn't like me. I think it did try to throw something or shoot arc at me, but it missed. If you do have your super, use your super, but I do recommend to save your super for the next mini phase. Because the next mini phase is when we're going to deal with ads and the two Sapathon mini bosses that love to spam lightning chakra. And when I say they like to spam lightning chakra, well, excuse me, wizard. Excuse me, boss, with your pulse grenades. Do you see what I mean of this boss being extremely unpredictable? And sometimes he likes to throw this arc grenade and surprise attack you. This is why I don't like this boss fight. It's so unpredictable. It's ridiculous. If I was standing there for one more second or half a second, I would have been sent back to orbit. But this boss decided to do this sneak attack of throwing an arc pulse grenade at me. It was already frustrating as it is of hiding behind the statues left and right, left and right, and using his super. So yeah, this is going to be a long boss fight. I mean, I'm trying, but aim assist is just flinch from the arc knights when they do spawn again you know what's the best part we're getting 25% damage on the wish ender 
because we're on void subclass and it feels like it's not doing any damage at all at the boss it's just so tanky and this is why i said that this is a rehash battlegrounds i don't think they play tested i don't think they did some testing with the health This is just ridiculous. I don't like it. I don't understand how players find this fun. I don't think this is enjoyable. So very soon we're gonna go to the mini phase and everyone is gonna love this. You're gonna love this. But not me. I'm gonna hate this. Because I had some trouble dealing with the Sathathon phase where we had to pick up the staff. And here's the one thing I don't like about it. So first of all, we're going to have one Sapathon that will spawn. We have to pick up the staff that will automatically auto-aim shoot the Sapathon. Now the problem is that when you are using the Arc Staff, you can't use your invisibility. You have to drop it and then use it. So this is one of the reasons why Graviton Forfeit would be so much easier dealing with this phase. And not only that, the boss or the mini boss, Sapphathen likes to spam this lightning chain of chakra. Chakra, alright? Or this lightning storm grenades OP attack, alright? And she likes to do it every 10 seconds, sometimes 12. And they can be really unpredictable. And we're going to have the last two champions. So once I deal with these champions, I'm finally done with the Platinum Rank. So during this part, I do recommend not to anger Sapathon. Make sure you take down the two champions. And then you can harass the Sapathon with the Arc Staff. When doing DPS, I do recommend to use your super dealing with unstoppable champion. This is one of the reasons why you need to use your super or save your super for this phase. Because the thing is, the boss, well, the champion will push. And then this arc champion will sh spam, will spam his arc attack. And you will be sent back to orbit if both of them shoot you at the same time. highly recommend to use your heavy as well and then you're gonna have these acolytes just popping out of nowhere and then spamming this void attack at you and sometimes it will throw fire at you so just be aware of that beware of your surroundings now i'm just trying to use this method you know the jump wish ender method the one that people are saying oh you gotta use it you gotta use it i mean it doesn't really work 100 percent i wouldn't be using it and you can see why now do you see why this is such a bad idea to do this method on console? I mean, I tried to do it. I showed it again. All right, this is the third time I showed it. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work on console. It works on PC. There, I said it. Not being mellow anymore. It doesn't work. It's too much work. Just peek and shoot. Peek and shoot. Don't even buy yourself doing the jump wish ender method. If you are on Xbox or PlayStation. If you're on PC, then go ahead. Use it on PC. I have nothing against for PC. But sometimes the PC gameplay is entirely different compared to console gameplay. Alright, so once we deal with the Acolytes and everything is good to go. Now we're going to be dealing with Sabathon. So I remember about the lightning storm grenades attack or the lightning chakra. So there are two methods you can do here. If you are using graviton forfeit, then just use your dodge and then you can pick up the staff. Over here I messed up because these acolytes mess up my DPS. And unfortunately, I have to start all over again. I couldn't dodge because I had to drop the staff. But when you drop the staff, then it despawns back to the middle of the map.
So Sabathon likes to unleash his lightning every 10 to 12 seconds. Sometimes it's very unpredictable. And sometimes I have a hard time hearing the sound. And it's much more complicated when two of them are roaming around like a psychopath, spamming this lightning chakra all over the map. Just be aware of the lightning attack. And if the boss sees you, then you must wait until it goes back to his lightning spam. So during this phase, it's best to try to do as much damage until Saphathan decides to go on the right side. So depending how much damage you do, I'm going to... I'm going to guess that it is one bar of the third health. If not, it is half. You must do as much DPS as you can with the staff. So the boss will move on this side. See this side where I'm standing? It's going to move around that spot eventually once you do DPS at the boss. But the problem for this is that I'm having issues of getting the staff because my invisibility is not that strong, not that long compared to Graviton Forfeit. So now I'm going to pull back. I'm going to try my best to do as much DPS as I can. So right now I'm just trying to see if I can do DPS. I apologize of my horrible, horrible aim. So later on I figure out you could just stand still on these stairs and then shoot with the Arc Staff to do DPS at the Sephathon mini boss. So now I'm just waiting for the boss to not follow me. Joke aside, I'm just waiting for my smoke. Once I waited for my smoke, now I'm gonna wait for the lightning. It likes to spam his lightning every 10 to 12 seconds. It's oh it's very unpredictable, to be honest. If you actually wait for two minutes or more, the boss will actually stop spamming his lightning attack and just float around. That is prob that is the method I did on the second phase and I had a water break. I had a 10 minute break and then later a water break because it was giving me a headache. It, because it was just bad. It was just bad level design for a GM. You know, if I get headaches, especially something like this, then it's bad. It's not looking good. So now I'm gonna go and grab the arc steps. I'm waiting for my dodge to smoke to get it back. Once I get the smoke, then I can finally get the arc staff. I'm just waiting for the sound of the lightning, the lightning chakra, or the lightning storm grenades, or storm lightning. Any nicknames you guys have, just comment below for the boss. So this time I'm going to use my arc staff and then try to do DPS as much as I can. Eventually, the boss will move from this spot, and that's what you want. You want the boss to move so you can have an easier time of grabbing the arc staff. So now I'm just going to wait and see if the boss is going to be moving. That's why I was standing here, because I'm trying to figure out if the boss moved or he's still on the left side. So I was trying to hear the lightning if she moved or not. Didn't look like she moved at all. And because of that, I have to once again grab the arc staff and then try again. So that's why I was just waiting here and trying to hear the lightning. And it looked like she is definitely somewhat moving. But we want her to move a little bit more from the right side. So once again, I use the arc staff to do as much DPS. 
But then later these acolytes were throwing fire at me. So what I should have done over there is just go to the stairs area to grab to do DPS at the Sapathon. So when I was doing DPS at the boss, then finally the boss moved to this side. So when you do see the boss doing this attack, you must immediately go from the left side. The reason why is sometimes the boss can kill you in this tunnel. It has happened to me many times. So I highly recommend when you do see that, that is a signal of you to go from the opposite side. You can't stand here forever, so make sure you go on the left side and then you can grab the staff and you'll have an easier time doing DPS. So always remember that cue, that sign when you do see the lightning chakra or lightning storm. When you are in the tunnel, you must move from this side. So this is the next area that you'll be. will be the mini safe spot for now. Sometimes the Arcanines like to push and shoot Arc at you. So make sure you use a rocket if you see them, or you can jump, you can double jump and use your wish ender. Anything that you feel most comfortable works, or if you're in your fire team, make sure you have your fire team have invisibility and then just make them move quickly from the other side. If not, then they're gonna be stuck. And then it'll probably be best to just take down the sap song before going to the next phase. So here's the question. What if one of your teammates dies on the spot of Sapathon? Here's the plan B. So if you are trying to go from the other side, this spot, and then one of your fire teams got lightning from the boss, the best thing you can do is just grab the arc staff, and of course with your fire team, and then just do as much DPS as you can. Because the problem is that the boss likes to spam his lightning every 12, 10 seconds. And you're not going to have time to revive him in time. And you're just going to waste your revives for a fire team. So best for this method, for this phase, is if you one of your fire teams um, got killed by the mini boss, then you must take down the sapathon before reviving them. It's just a tip for fire team if something happens where you're trying to revive them but it's not working out. So right now what I'm trying to do here is I am going to go hide over here because sapathon decided to go from the other side and it was my bad here. Sometimes he doesn't like to move. There are phases where Sapathon doesn't like to move in that spot. But for some reason this video, she decided to just move on the other side. Great, you know. It just gets better and better. So I decided to wait and see what's going on where the boss is floating around. I was trying to hear the lightning if it's close by or far distance. But this usually doesn't really happen so much, so I was actually really surprised. So I was trying to see where the boss is, and I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see nothing. So then later on, I'm going to try again and see where she is so I can grab the arc staff and just get this done and over it. So now I'm going to go grab the arc staff 
And I was trying to figure out where the boss is. Because usually she doesn't really like to move around in this phase. But for some reason she seems to move around. So then later on I found out that she's all the way from this side. So sometimes this boss likes to move around at this first phase or the second mini phase. So once I found out where the boss is, best thing is not to interrupt her, not to make her see you, and then just turn invisible, grab the arc staff, and then do DPS. So once we do, once we defeat the Sathathan, the first one, we're gonna go from the opposite direction to do DPS for the second phase of the boss. So I am gonna wait for my smoke, and then we're finally going to defeat this horrendous, awful Sapathon mini boss. Even though it's not really the final boss, but for some reason this felt more nerve wracking. So now you can just stand here, you'll have the auto aim assist, the auto aiming for some reason with this arc staff to do DPS. So right now, I'm just trying to make sure she doesn't see me. That's why I was doing the peek and shoot method. So now I'm going to wait for my smoke again. But then I got impatient. I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm just going to use my dodge and then just make it back all the way from this area. So now I'm going to be doing DPS. And then now we're going to go from the opposite direction. So for this mini method I like to use is, first of all, you need to make sure the boss is on top of that mini platform. And make sure you clear the ads from the right side so they won't throw fire at you. So right now I'm just trying to shoot these acolytes because they're hiding, playing hide and seek. And then once I take them down, then I'm going to go up and then deal with the boss. But... First things first, the Arc Knights. This method, I just crouch and then I just start shooting with Wish Ender. So I am waiting for the Arc Knights to see me so I can spam rockets and then use my super at them. So eventually, they will see you and then they will try to shoot Arc at you. So right now, I'm just waiting for them to shoot at me. You guys are wondering what I'm doing here. I'm waiting patiently. And this is probably the best method to deal with the boss. So now I see the Arc Knights are they found me. So once the boss's super is gone, I'm gonna go deal with him. Because he's messing up my safe spot for DPS. So I'm gonna use my super, make sure he gets taken down. And I'm going to spam my rocket. So I was looking, browsing, and so far they stopped harassing me. But then all the way from the right side, we see a Arc Knight. So m make sure you take them down here. I was just being reckless. I was trying to rush because I was just impatient. I lost my patience after this phase and I just didn't, I just want to get this done and over it. So make sure you take down the Arc Knights because they will mess up your DPS when you are going on that spot. So right now I was trying to figure out which one was it and I found him. So I'm going to jump and then use a rocket. And once I take him down, then it should be much easier to deal with him. And for some reason my rocket missed. I don't know why, but I guess I got bungeed. I'm not really sure what happened there. Once I take down the Arc Knight, now you can 
stand on this platform, make sure you crouch, and then you can just do DPS. The bad thing about this is that the boss likes to hide, and then you have to wait for 10 to 15 seconds for it to come out again, over and over again. So I'm going to do a mini time skip here until we get to the next phase. Make sure you have your super. Make sure you have enough rockets because this is going to be a pain in the bungee. This is going to be fun for you guys, but not for me. So let me introduce you to two Sathathons from left and right where they're going to be spamming lightning chakra or the lightning storms. This is going to be the level of patience. So first things first is you don't want the Sathathon to detect you from the backside. You want to make sure you take down the ads on the top and then the ogre from the bottom of the right. That's the first objective. Forget about the Sathathon. The Sathathon too many bosses. Just make sure they don't shoot arc at you and make sure they don't detect you. Because the one thing you don't want is you're trying to take down the arc knights. You're trying to take down the Az, Acolytes, the Ogre, and then all of a sudden they just throw a Nova Bomb at you. Or they just spam their arc blast, just like Light Blade. I am waiting for the lightning to go away and then I'm going to be shooting a rocket. So I'm going to be using my super very soon. Later on I did took a water break. 10 minute break because I had a headache so use your super or use your rockets and then pull back the reason why I did this is because I don't want the psychopathic sathathon to spam the chakra lightning of death at me and if you see these acolytes make sure you take the net quickly I was too slow here so I apologize for that that was a bad move I did I should have took down the acolyte but then the ogre was shooting and then if you look over here the arc knights or shooting as well. So now I am going to be once again waiting for the lightning to go away. Waiting for the Arc Knights to stop shooting his arc. Alright, so now I'm gonna go and use a rocket. But then I missed. Jesus Christ, I can't believe my rocket miss. That is embarrassing. Extremely embarrassing. So once again, I'm going to wait for my dodge and try again to clear the ads on the top. Alright, so once I get my dodge and have these Sathathon to not bother me, using a rocket, and then the knight all of a sudden either teleported or just jumped on here, which it was perfect. I was really happy because I really need to take down this knight. So once we take down all the ads from the roof, you can also use Wish Ender to see if any of them are there. Make sure you aim. Now I get to deal with the Ogre. So the Ogre, that is not a champion by the way, but I do recommend you take him down because he's going to be the one that's going to mess up your DPS. He's going to mess up when you grab the Arc Staff. So make sure you take down the Ogre and then a couple of the Acolytes that are trying to throw a fire at you. Or the Arc Knights that are shooting Arc at you from the far distance. Right now I'm just turning invisible because I want them to not detect me anymore. That's why I was waiting here patiently. Isn't it fun? And I didn't want the Sathathon to see me because there's times where I was being reckless and then guess what? A surprise attack and then it shoots a Nova Bomb and I almost die. Or the Sathathon from the opposite direction saw me randomly and then shoot this arc at me. So now I'm going to wait patiently and there is this Arc Knight that is shooting Arc at me. And I'm trying to figure out for this part of where is he coming from. Later on I figure out he was from the opposite direction hiding behind this wall and being a troll. So I did decide to use my rocket instead of the ogre which I don't know if it was a good move or a bad move. But I just didn't have the patience because the problem with these Arc Knights during this phase is they like to shoot arc and then hide shoot arc and then hide so i didn't have patience so i just decided to just use my rocket 
So once everything is quiet, I decide to see what's going on. Who's shooting arc at me? This arc knight. And then later on, I decided to just wait, dodge, and then just get him. Okay, so once I take down this Arc Knight, which he was extremely annoying, I did not have a good time dealing with that Arc Knight. Now we're gonna deal with the Ogre, so I'm just pulling back because I want the chain reaction to clear as much Acolytes as I can, and now we're gonna be dealing with the Ogre. So make sure you use your super if you can. I was trying to make the Ogre to peek and to see if it's gonna shoot Void at me. So right now I'm just waiting for my smoke. So now I was just thinking, that's why I was standing there. I was trying to figure out how am I going to deal with this hugger when he's just spamming this void blast at me. And then we got more acolytes and Navi the fairy from Zelda trying to one shot me. So now I'm just going to wait for the Sapathon to use his Lightning of Chakra. And then I'm going to use the Staff, Arc Staff to do DPS. So do as much Arc Staff as you can until she moves. So depending how much health it has, it's going to have the ability, the most annoying part, where it's going to move from the far right side. It'll still be in the opposite direction, but it's going to be from the right side. Now the problem is this. I had trouble hearing the lightning because I was hearing two at the same time and it was really loud. And I couldn't really detect it later on when it did decide to push from the right side. So if you guys are wondering here, I'm just waiting for Sapathon to spam his lightning so I can move and then grab the arc stab. That's why I was waiting here using my emote. So once she uses her lightning, then I'm gonna go push and then grab the arc stab. Later on, I noticed that if you actually wait long enough, it will stop using his lightning attack. I didn't found that out until later on. If I knew about that, where if you wait long enough, it'll stop spamming his lightning and you could just easily turn invisible and grab the arc staff. If I known about that method, this part would have been so much faster. I didn't know that if you wait for two minutes or longer or, or a minute, you can make the boss not spam his arc lightning attack and then you could just grab the arc staff and then it's not gonna hurt you i didn't know that away but it does spam his arc when it does see you but if you turn invisible and then just wait you could just grab it and then you can go for the safest method the method what i was trying to do by the way was waiting for the boss to spam his arc lightning or chakra every 10 to 12 seconds. Like right now, I'm just waiting for it. I was waiting for the boss to spam his lightning attack and then usually it's 10 to 12 seconds. And then I, I found out if I shoot a bow, then it spams his lightning. It was really weird, but later on I did found out that you can wait long enough for the boss to not spam his arc every 10 seconds and then you can just easily just turn invisible and then just grab the arc step. So I quickly grab it but try not to rush too much. You can also slide to gain momentum which I didn't know. Later on on this footage I found that you can gain momentum if you slide. So if you do grab the arc step, slide for your life, I wouldn't really bother myself jumping because you don't get the forward jump momentum compared with the slide. So if you do grab the arc staff once again, 
just slide it's better so this is gonna be the tough method and you're probably wondering what I'm doing over here so finally the boss from the opposite direction was pushing from the right side but in the opposite direction you'll see what I mean when I'm talking about it does sound a bit confusing so now you see Savathon on that spot and this is gonna be the hard part which I didn't know and I was just trying to do the other method so there are two options you can do for this one the first option is you can is you can wait every 12 seconds every 10 to 12 seconds for the boss from the opposite direction to the, to use his lightning attack but the problem for me in this footage was i was hearing both of them really loud on my headphones and i just didn't bother myself adjusting my headphones so i, I just cannot bother myself guys to pause the game go into settings and then just adjust it or it was just really annoying that both of them were loud at the same time. Usually you have one faded from the left side and one loud on the right side. For some reason, my headphones was detecting both of them really loud. And it was just confusing me a lot. So later on, eventually, I just waited for Sapathon to wait for his lightning and then proceed to the arc staff. So I am going to do a mini time skip over here because I did take a water break and a 10 minute break. I waited for the Savathon to stop spamming his lightning. So when that happened, I decided to pull back, slide, and then do DPS at the Savathon. So the problem with this method is you gotta be extremely careful. You gotta peek and shoot, peek and shoot, and don't mess around with Savathon. Because this is when she can shoot arc at you. And when I mean shoot arc at you, I mean it can one-shot you. So you gotta be extremely careful with this boss. And this is one of the reasons why Graviton Forfeit would help so much for this phase. Because you don't have to wait for your smoke. You don't have to... You don't have to worry about the smoke so much. So you can see here, I was looking. And then I messed up over here. She is going to spam his arc attack at me. And there are times where I pop a smoke and she still saw me while invisible. So that's why I was spamming the dodge more than the smoke. If you guys are wondering why am I not using the smoke and just using the dodge. Well because I had a weird issue where the boss saw me even when I turned invisible. But I was using the smoke. So I'm going to do many time skip over here. I'm going to wait for the boss from the other side to stop spamming his lightning. Alright, so I'm gonna go grab the staff, the boss from the right side stopped spamming his lightning attack and of course took a 10 minute break here and there. So I'm gonna turn invisible and I'm gonna grab the arc staff. So you can see here, proof here that when you do wait long enough, you can just simply turn invisible and then grab the arc staff. So just be careful with this boss. He decided to shoot arc. I quickly, quickly went back to the tunnel. So this is why you have to be extremely careful. And this is why you have to be very cautious. So sometimes when you do the peek and shoot method, it doesn't work 100%. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. So you need to be extremely careful. So now I'm going to wait for the boss on the right side to stop spamming his lightning. So right now, I was just observing the boss, trying to see what she's doing. Then I'm going to go pull back, grab the staff, and then quickly slide for my life. My goodness, this Sabathon mini boss is so scary. Did you guys see that? That was like more, that was like level 2 of Lightning Chakra over there. So now we're going to be spamming the Arc Staff. And finally, we took down the Savathon mini boss, one of them. So now we're gonna have an easy break because now we're gonna deal with the Savathon from the spot where we are right now. We're gonna go from the opposite direction and we're gonna grab the Arc Staff from the other side. And this is gonna be so much easier than the first Savathon. So first things first, clear down the ads, make sure Savathon doesn't see you. So hide behind this wall in the middle. 
highly recommend. Sometimes these Arcanites can sneak up behind you. You can see right here. Also, pull back from the back if the boss sees you. So right now, I'm going to do the peek and shoot method. And if she, start, if she starts to spam arc, pull back, pull back. It's not worth it. It's not worth of trying to do the peek and shoot while spamming his arc attack because it can track you. So you can see here, I'm trying to do the peek and shoot method. I'm trying to grab the arc staff and then jump and then try my best not for her to detect me. I don't think it's a good idea to try to jump and shoot because I feel like it can see you and it'll spam his arc attack. Later in the beginning of the boss fight, that's the method where I should have done in the beginning, but hey, it's new and honestly, I just honestly, I just think this battle grounds is rehash version is I don't think it's a good idea. I still prefer the new strikes or the sunset strikes to be a GM instead of this. So you peek and shoot, eventually, eventually the boss sometimes will detect you and try to use this arc blast. It has happened to me before on my previous run, so you can see here the boss sometimes will spam his arc. And it freaked me out a bit. It, kind of, it scared me a bit, so the reason why I jumped there was I freaked out a bit. I panic because it almost one shot me. And you know how arc blasts are, even in light blade, you, you know, it's a half a second death. So now I try to see if I can do this method where I can peek and shoot from this direction. Later on it worked out and now we're gonna go from the opposite direction to deal with the final boss. Finally. So I'm gonna pull back here. And then we're going to go and deal with the final boss, the last phase. So right now, I was trying to figure out if any ads will push during this phase. Because this was actually the first time at this phase. Isn't that funny? Because most of my attempts was during the Sapathon phase, where I was trying to grab the Arc Staff, but then the lightning kept killing me over and over and over again. And later on, I found out that you can wait for the boss from behind you to stop is lightning attack. If it doesn't see you, if you just stand still and then just do emoji or anything you want, as long as you're not shooting, then you could just grab the arc staff, harmless as a fly, and then you could just keep doing that over and over again. If you don't want to count the 10 to 12 seconds. Because I tried to do that method, but it didn't work out. I was hearing the opposite lightning and it just wasn't working. During this last phase, I was being a little reckless. I was just trying to spam all my rockets because I was just absurd and extremely fed up with this GM. I just lost my patience over here. At this point, I was just really upset. I was going to meet my mic, but then at the same time, I was like, wait, no, 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 no. I'll just leave it on. So make sure you do the peek and shoot method. I did try the jumping wish ender method. Doesn't really work on console. I mean, if you're on PC, then just do that method then. For me, it didn't work out all right. I tried it. Doesn't work. It lead me to a death. It lead me to arc pulse death. It lead me to arc knight's shooting me. So this is when things can be a bit complicated. Arc Knights were shooting at me and I couldn't see the boss so much. She was hiding in this awkward wall and I was trying to do DPS but it wasn't really working out. So maybe maybe I should have went to the opposite direction and then try to see if I can make the boss go from that side so I could have an easier time doing DPS at this part. Always, and remember, when you do have your saver, just use it at the boss. Use as much as you can. And... 
I was just having a lot of trouble with this boss. She was just very unpredictable and I couldn't really see her so well. And the best thing I could do was just peek and shoot. I couldn't jump and shoot with wish under. It didn't work out. Hopefully this boss is not going to do any sneak attacks. I'm really, really fed up of this boss doing sneak attacks on me with the arc pulses, arc blasts. It's just plain ridiculous. So now I'm just going to take my time over here. I'm not going to time skip this. I feel like I should time skip this, but I'm not. I'm just going to let... I'm going to suffer and you're going to suffer with me. Alright. I already did time skip at the beginning of the tanky boss where the health didn't matter. Alright, so now we're gonna suffer together forever and ever. Now she was just standing there and then now she's just dancing around, floating all over. Then we got this Arknight bothering me and harassing me. It's just great. I just love this. This is so fun. This is so challenging, isn't it? I decided to try this spot through the peek and shoot method. See if that will work out. And if you do have your super, highly recommend to use your super. Take down the acolytes, well, take down the boss. But for some reason, the statue blocked my super. And now the boss is hiding. Come out, hurry up, I want to get this done and over it. I'm sorry guys, this boss is just being so shy, I apologize. I, I'm not sure why she was being like that. I don't think she wants me to get platinum rank. I think that's the reason. So I'm doing a peek and shoot method. The statue is in the way. I wish it wasn't there. It would have been easier to do DPS. Over here I was like, okay, maybe I'll try the peek method. Didn't work. Gave up. Right now it's just floating from the left and right. It's just behaving so awkward. Like during the last phase, the boss is just behaving so awkward. The more health, the more low the health, the more awkward the boss is. Now she's hiding again. It's wasting 30 seconds of my life over here. And now she comes out. Now she's here. It's like, hey, 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 I'm just taking a break. She's going to use her super. And then hopefully we can deal with this boss. We can finally take this down and then have platinum rank. So now I'm just doing DPS as much as I can. Then guess what? I forgot that you had to crush the ghost. So then I was freaking out. It's like, oh my goodness, I forgot. So I quickly crush the ghost as fast as I can. And then I dodge and pull back. So finally, we defeated the most rehatched battlegrounds ever. And I'm gonna touch grass. I can't take it anymore. This is the worst idea layout ever. Battlegrounds, rehashed battlegrounds doesn't belong on Grandmaster playlists. I stand by from it. They're not fun. I don't like it. The only reason why I got this done is because next week is going to be my birthday. That's the only reason why. Alright, hint, hint. After reset. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.